Good morning. My name is Matt Price, and I'm an executive coach and consultant in Colorado. I'm a husband, I'm a father, and I've dedicated my life to the pursuit of the human spirit. I'll start with this. For the last 10 years, I spent my time in corporate America coaching and training business owners to go out and accomplish goals. And I liken it to a little bit like an NBA basketball coach. You see, they made more money than me. They really didn't have to listen to me. And there are a few large egos that I got to manage along the way. I got to learn how to lead through influence and relationships, and I'm going to share some of those lessons with you today. During this talk, we're going to talk about fear. How fear shows up in our body, how fear shows up in our environment, how fear shows up in our minds. If you didn't allow fear to get in the way, what could you achieve? Bring something to mind that you've been holding back from. And a little bit later during this talk, we're going to do a quick exercise that teaches how to overcome that fear. This is a groundhog. Oftentimes in life, it can feel like the same thing over and over and over again, especially at work. And usually we think about people who are performing at a suboptimum level are the ones that fall prone to Groundhog's Day. From my experience, high achievers are especially prone to Groundhog's Day. And we're going to talk about how we can shift this feeling. So let's go on a journey together. This is a success journey. And when I started out coaching and consulting with people, we would, they would set goals. Sometimes I would, you know, give them their goal, but uh, they didn't really respond to that. And they'd set those goals, and they'd go out to accomplish those goals, and they'd stop. Kids' activities got in the way. Maybe they had an employee quit, health issues, all those things. And so we got to focus on activities, which was a tried and true method of success. And when we start anything new, we start down in this stress excitement part of this journey. When you start a new job or you start a new business, we're really excited about that job. But I don't know how the heck I'm going to accomplish anything I'm going to be doing in that environment. So down there, it's a little stressful when we first begin. I like to use an analogy of losing weight. Anybody ever had a goal to lose some weight? Absolutely. So let's say I wanted to lose 10 pounds in the next 30 days. What do I do? I focus on activities. I get an app on my phone. I start counting my calories. I make a goal to go to the gym five days a week. Or I make a goal to meditate five days a week to bring down my stress and lower my cortisol levels. And I do these consistently, and I start moving up the spectrum of success, as you can see in the orange part, towards comfort. I get on the scale, I've lost eight of the 10 pounds, which was my goal, and sure enough, I get comfortable. Let's say today I forgot my lunch and french fries are my favorite food, so I drive through the drive-through and I pick up, not a small fry, I gotta get a colossal size, right? So I pick that up and I stop going to the gym, I stop doing my meditation, I stop doing those activities, those little things, and I start falling back down towards stress. Then I get on the scale, and I put on five of the eight pounds I've lost. It's a trigger for me. I'm stressed about it because I know without my health, it's the number one thing, right? And what do I do? I start counting my calories, going to the gym, meditating, and moving back up the level of success. This can be a roller coaster ride through life, continuing to take actions and falling off. The top 5% of people have figured out a way to master the little things for success. And I like to say it like this. When I think about how important those little things are, I think there are no little things. When I think about how important little things are to success, I think there are no little things. And once I get those mastered, I start performing at a high level, and I stop the perpetuity of this roller coaster, and I create success. Okay, there's another thing that was happening though. As I was working with my people, they were missing the top part of this slide called fulfillment. And I had one of the people I lead, he was very vulnerable with me. He said, Matt, let's go get some coffee. I said, absolutely. And he said, you know what? I've got a great, successful business. I'm making more money than I ever thought I had. I've got more time than I ever thought I would have. Kids are good, and I am not fulfilled. And as he was speaking, I was like, I can totally relate. 
there's something else happening at this T, this cross-section with our goals. And so I put together a small group of people, and we did high-intense coaching on a weekly basis. And they'd set their goals, goals they wanted to do, and then they pull back. It kept happening, these little things. And then I noticed something. They weren't just failing because of the, not doing the little things. They were pulling back because they were scared. You see, these are people with a track record of success. They built their businesses. And all of a sudden, people who had taken risks a number of years ago took risks completely off the table. There was a different phenomenon going on here. And what showed up is they were scared. They had fear. They had fear about what other people would think, which is a huge fear of mine. They had fear about if I went out and failed in front of the people I was leading or especially the customers I served, what would they think? So in my experience, fear, we get to change the story of fear. Fear is a trigger. That's a place we want to lean into. That's the place that's telling us the right way to go. You see, we do not change. We all know this. We do not change unless we are uncomfortable. And we cannot grow unless we experience discomfort. And fear is that trigger for us. So where does the fear show up in our bodies? For some of us, it's in our shoulders. It gets really tight. For others of us, it's in our stomachs. And it can kind of be this tingly feeling or a queasy feeling. Or for some of us, we just get so tight in our stomachs, we just can't breathe. I like to refer to this feeling as butterflies in the stomach. When I notice about something I'm going to embark on, that gives me fear or makes me uncomfortable, I start getting these butterflies and they start flapping all over the place. And what I like to do with these butterflies is I like to envision them flying in a V formation. I'm going to take control of those butterflies like, and envision them like geese going south for the winter. You see, these butterflies are the trigger for us. It tells us we're about to do something that's risky. And when I overcome that risk, it could bring me some fulfillment. After I envision these butterflies, I like to do a quick breathing exercise. And what I do is I close my eyes, I picture the number five, and I breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth, and count down to zero. So if you didn't allow fear to get in the way, what could you achieve? Bring that to mind. And if you join me, I'd like to run through this exercise with you. So bring up what you've been fearing. Bring it to mind. Close your eyes with me. Feel those butterflies. Picture them flying in that V formation. Breathe in through the nose. Out through the mouth. And now picture the number five. Breathe in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Picture number four, and as we do this, we're getting more and more calm, more and more relaxed. Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth, and picture number three. Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Picture number two. Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Picture number one. Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth, and picture zero. And take inventory. Even if you didn't have a fear come up, I bet we're still feeling more relaxed, a little less stressed, and a little more grounded. Why don't you open your eyes and rejoin me up here. It's a great exercise you can use for yourself or the people that you lead. And one of my favorite questions to ask the people that I work with is, when you think back about life, what have been your happiest moments? And oftentimes they talk about graduating college or winning a championship or performing in that musical, raising kids, seeing your kids graduate college or having a 30 to 40 year fulfilling relationship or marriage. These can be difficult things. Overcoming fear, discomfort and overcoming fear is the price of admission to a fulfilling life. Discomfort and overcoming fear is the price of a mission to a fulfilling life. When I think about that thing that brings me fear, I visualize those butterflies in formation, I breathe, and then we take a step. James Clear said it beautifully in his book, Atomic Habits, fear is the gas pedal, not the brake. Action cures fear. Action cures fear every time. When that fear comes up, I get to take a step. 
Some of the challenges in society today is that we read the blogs, we read the books, we join the podcasts, and we hear about these things that people are doing that are so incredibly amazing. And I get overwhelmed, and I stop. And then I got to remember, moving forward can be a small step. It doesn't have to be large. I liken this to a puzzle. You know, you get a puzzle out, you go to the game closet, you set it over here, you put up the box, right? And what do you do? You look for those corner pieces first. You look for the border pieces. You take a small step. Once you get that completed, I always look at the box and I look for that area with a lot of color. Another small step. But oftentimes I'll look in the box and I'll find two pieces that go together that I wasn't even looking for. It's a great metaphor for life because those pieces you find that you weren't even experiencing or you didn't know you were going to experience oftentimes brings the joy and the fulfillment in the process. So I love that analogy of putting that puzzle together. When I have the fear, I breathe, butterflies, formation, I take a step, I look for the next puzzle piece. When I was 25 years old, I started my first business. And it was late at night, cold outside, all the employees had gone home, and I got to make phone calls. And I was broke. I mean, I was macaroni and cheese without the milk broke, right? And I'd look at that phone, and it weighed 100 pounds, or it looked like it weighed 100 pounds. And I was so scared of what perfect strangers were going to think about me on the other end of the phone. What did I do? Butterflies in formation. I breathed. I got relaxed, and I dialed that number. And sure enough, I didn't die. And then I dialed another number, and another number, and I just kept taking steps. I kept looking for the next puzzle piece. I kept finding my way. Action cures fear every time. Look for that next puzzle piece. And oftentimes on the journey, we talk about that as being the end. But I had a mentor introduce me to a, the last concept, which is to celebrate. Sounds so easy, right? When I was in corporate America, first of all, I stopped dreaming. But second of all, I used to resent New Year's Eve. The reason was is that all the things I accomplished during the year would go back to zero. It looked like I was having fun at the party, but I really wasn't. And at first in my career, I thrived on it. But as time went on, it led directly to burnout. And I had a mentor challenge me to celebrate more along the way. And they don't have to be big celebrations. They could be a, a, you know, a manicure or a pedicure. They could be a massage or my favorite, a date night with my spouse. I also have another suggestion. Every quarter, find a place that gives you peace. Go there. Reflect on how you showed up in the last 90 days. Did you accomplish your goals? When fear arose, did you pull back from getting what you dreamed and hoped for? How did you show up in your relationships, your environment? Then, set some goals for the next 90 days, but not just things you want to achieve, impact you want to make, being there for people, whatever that is. Then put all that stuff away and celebrate with your family, friends, for some of us by ourselves. Renew, refresh, enjoy, so when I go back to work, and I, can, I can accomplish more things. You see, in corporate America, I stopped dreaming. I stopped dreaming. I forgot that I could accomplish anything I put my mind to. We got one shot at this life. We got one journey. And I decided I could continue to have a been there, done that attitude or I could continue to overcome. So we get to embrace the risk. If we didn't allow fear to get in the way, what could we achieve? Bring it to mind. Picture that dream. And if you didn't step out to start moving towards that dream and you just let it go, what's the risk in that? Notice the fear that comes up. Get those butterflies flying in formation. Breathe. Take action. Action cures fear. Find that next puzzle piece. And when you do this, you and the people around you, when we're celebrating the journey, are going to live a more fulfilling and fun and wonderful life. 
My name is Matt Price. I want to thank all the people here for coming and all the organizers of this. This has been an absolute dream come true. Let's go out and make it a great day. Thank you very much. <laughs>